everyone and welcome to today's class. I am Anne and today we will discuss about the foundation of roof behavior. The content consists of five parts. The first one is classifying and defining roofs. The second one is stages of roof development. The third one is roof properties. The, the fourth one is group decision making and the last one is the summary. Before going to the topic, I will briefly outline the meaning of group behavior. Individuals form groups. They live in groups. They move in groups. They work in groups. Groups are important. They influence work and work behavior. They cannot be ignored. They exert significant influence on the organization. They are inseparable from organization. They are useful for the organization. So, group behavior affects productivity. Now, first, let's begin with how we distinguish different types of groups. Hi, this is Phuong. Today, to provide you with better understanding about the foundations of group behavior, I will bring you through the group definition, group classification, and group development model. Okay, so what is a group? A group includes two or more people interacting to achieve a same goal. Okay, within a group, all members are interdependent. Interdependent means they have to rely on each other to together accomplish their goal. If one or more member fail to perform their task, the whole group would probably fail too. So where can we find group? Okay, so um, for example, on the first day of our OB class, the teacher told us to form a group of four members. Um, the four members now have the same goal, that is to uh, finish the assignment on time. If one or more members do not do their task, the whole group would lose its course, yeah? So all members here have to work together productively to give out the best outcomes. Moving on, there are two main kinds of groups. Uh, the first one is formal group and the second one is informal group. Okay, let's talk about formal group. Formal group uh, at its name is a work group defined by an organization structure and they have to work with designated tasks and assignments. Um, for example, um, an airline flight crew with six members uh, is a formal group. They have to work under given guidelines to offer the customer the best flying experience. Yeah, um, formal group have to work to achieve an organizational goal. Um, there are two kinds of formal group, which are command group and task group. Okay, command group includes those who work and report directly to a given manager. And task group uh, indicates those who work together to complete a job or a task of the organization, but without any high care hierarchical uh, boundaries. This means a task group may include both the boss and the employees. Um, about informal group, informal group doesn't have a formal structure and it is not mm, defined by an organization. It is simply a response to the need uh, for social contact of people. So uh, take IU student as an example. A group of students who have lunch together at the IU canteen in order to share thoughts on their lectures or about their day uh, is a formal group, informal group, yeah. And there are also two subclasses of informal group. Uh, the first one is interest group and the second one is friendship group. Interest group are those who work together to attain a specific objective uh, that everyone is involved. So the example that I mentioned above about the OB group, yes, OB group is a kind of um, interest group. Yes, we have um, the same objective and all of us is involved. Okay. 
Another kind of uh, informal group is friendship group. Um, this kind of group involves the includes those people who come together because they share one or more common characteristic. Yeah, so maybe there's a, a group of friends, for example. Okay, so we have uh, tried to look at the definition of group. Um, so what about why people join group? The social identity theory will answer this question. Social identity theory it shows that people often have emotional reactions to the success or failure of a group because their self-esteem is cold closely tied to the group performance okay so if you go to the stadium to support your favorite football team you would probably know the feeling okay so imagine if your team win the match you and other fans would be obviously so proud yeah you're proud and you're giddy with happiness right however in other cases if another team's fan would feel extremely embarrassed on the even though they they're not the cause that the team lose yeah that's uh, explain the uh, social identity theory so um, there are four elements uh, that is can be developed from the theory which is similarity distinctiveness um, status and uncertainty reduction so People often decide to form group because they bear some similarities with a member in the group, right? For example, you go to the same company, you study in the same school, or uh, you have the same job, or maybe they share some common characteristic. Maybe they have the same favorite football team, for example. Okay, and however, inside a group, that person still keep their distinctiveness. Uh, distinctiveness here means that they are also they have some similarities. They are something. They are still something that keep them different from the other one. Yes. Okay. So another point is that um, because uh, there a, a people's self esteem is connected to the group, so people tend to join a uh, high status club. A group so that their self esteem is satisfied okay and last but not least people join group to re reduce their uncertainty about who they are and do they fit in with the society yes that's the far problem that um, the social identity theory can help you explain why people join group and about the social identity um, people can have many identities throughout their lifetime. They can have the identity in terms of their university, their company, their profession, or even their gender. Yeah, that is some identities that people can have during over their lifetime. Um, moving on, another point I want to mention here is uh, there is another way to classify groups which is in groups and out groups okay so in groups favoritism occurs when a member inside a group see their group members superior than other people and they see other people all the same okay and whenever there is an in group there is also an out group and an out group here means everyone else except for the members inside the group inside the in group and especially uh, the app group also refers to the identified group that is especially known by the in-group members okay let me take an example so that you can understand this concept better um okay so my in-group my in-group is the republic party of the u.s so my out group would probably be every week everyone else except for uh, anyone else except for the Republican okay but more specific to be more specific my app group would be other US political parties and to be even more specific my app group would be Democrats yes okay so that is how I finished the definition and the subclassification 
classification of group. Let's move on to the group development model. About the group development model, uh, there are five stages in the development model, which is the first one is forming, the second one is storming, the third one is norming, the fourth one is performing, and the last one is adjourning. Okay, so let me explain through the five stages. Okay, the first stage is forming. Okay, forming is the stage when the members feel the most uncertainty because at this time they have to discuss a lot to pick out their roles and to choose the group norms. Okay, moving on to the next stage is the storming stage. Yeah, uh, at storming stage, the roles continue to develop, but the conflict may also arise among the members. However, moving on to the norming stage, at this stage, the members are build stronger relationship and they are more connected, so they can share more things on the problems that is occurring to serve the conflict. Yeah. The next stage is performing. This is when everything is well functioning and they are uh, heading towards achieving their goal. And the last step, adjourning. The last stage is adjourning is when temporary groups uh, finish everything and wrap up their activities. Okay, so these stages, uh, they do not follow a linear direction. They can happen simultaneously. Yeah, several stages can happen at the same time. Okay, however, uh, this uh, group development model do not work for all kinds of groups. Uh, temporary groups with given deadlines, they have another model to follow which is called the punctuated equilibrium model. Yes, and this model includes a unique sequence of action. The first action is when the group set their direction. The second action is the first phase of the inertia. The third action is when the transition happens. Uh, the fourth action is when the transition create major changes into the group and the fifth action uh, is the second phase of the inertia and the last action is when they have accelerated activities and in this kind of uh, group development model the halfway point is when we can see a significant increase in the group productivity Okay, so that's all uh, of my part of explaining to you guys about the definition, classification, and also two kinds of group development model. Um, moving on, my friend will continue to discuss with you guys about group properties. Hello everybody, it's a pleasure to be with me today. My name is Tu. As you know, work group shape members' behavior, and they also help is explain individual behavior as well as uh, the performance of the group itself and some defining groups properties are drones, norms, status, size, cohesiveness and diversity. After my teammate talk about the defined groups and distinguish the different types of group, identify the five stages of group development, I will discuss it in the session that follow. Let's begin with the first group property, roles. Roles are the expected behavior individual will take on in a group, such as the leader or the task master. There are several properties of role, include intensity, perception, expression, conflict, and play. It's simulation. Each role is assigned a certain identity that explains as expected attitudes and behaviors that correspond with the role identity. Each individual has uh, their own point of view of how they are supposed to act in the context of the group. This is called the drone perception. I get drone perception from stimuli all around us. For example, um, friends, books, films, and television. 
The road expectation looks at how others believe a person should act in a given situation. A Supreme Court judge is viewed as a having priority and dignity, while a football coach is seen as aggressive and dynamic and uh, inspiring to the players. Psychological contract, an unwritten agreement that sets out what management expects from an employee. The role conflict occur when the expected behaviors don't match with the behavior being expected and assembled. Can be found in work family conflict, which will experiences when expectation plays on him husband and father differ from those pleasant on him as an executive with the EMM industries. Let's move on to the example of the role play and assimilation. Zimbardo conducted a prison appointment at Stanford University where he randomly assigned students to the road of girls and uh, prisoners. He set up a stimulated prison in the psychology building on Stanford's campus and uh, make the experiment as realistic as possible in the study. The volunteers were assigned to be either girls or prisoners up by the flip of a call in a mock prison with a juvenile himself serving as the super incident. Within six years, the girls and residents have taken to their roles in such a way that experiment was halted due to concerns about the impact on the participants over the course of the experiment. Some of the girls become cruel and tyrannical, while a number of the prisoners became distressed and disoriented. This brings me to my second point. The norms are standards of behavior that are acceptable by group members. There are different types of norms, such as uh, performance norms that look at an um, acceptable work level or quality or experience norms about what to wear, social arrangement norms look at acceptable relationships, and a location of resources norms look at how things are distributed. Norms can cover any aspect of group behavior. As we've mentioned, norms is the workplace significantly influence employees' behavior. This may seem intuitive, but a full appreciation of the, the influence of norms on worker behavior did not occur until the Harvard studies were conducted between 1924 and 1932 as Western Electric Company's Hawthorne was in Chicago. The fighting has been widely used the understanding of group interaction. These studies found that the worker behavior was highly influenced by group norms that individual productivities were influenced by the standards the group set forth. Also, money was not important, were not as important in determining workers' output as group standards and sentiment were. This is my third point about the group's norms and behavior. Group norms and behavior based on conformity where individuals will gain acceptance with the group by changing their behavior to more closely match that of the group. Individual will match their behavior to reference groups, groups they see as important. The 
students further our understanding of a conformity and demonstrated power of governments. Ash set forth a series of um, experiments where the actual world fairly easy and straightforward. However, when he had group members answer incorrectly, it influenced the subject to answer incorrectly as well, even though the answer was not difficult. The study, however, was done a number of years ago. Some research has shown that conformity is decreasing in importance and can be culturally powerful. I will show you a, a replication of the cards used during the experiment. The card on the left is for reference and the one on the right so the comparison lies. Solomon asked experiment actors make the strong line and then people are um, cursed by conformity to pick something they know is wrong along less than 1% and make mistakes in the groups wrong 33% of the time. Let's move on to the last point. Deviant workplace behavior, also called um, antisocial behavior or workplace instabilities, a voluntary behavior that volatiles significant organizational norms and in so doing threatens the well-being of the organization or its member. Exhibition 93 provides us a um, typology of deviant workplace behavior with example of each production, working speed, um, property damage and styling, political uh, favoritism and causes, personal aggression, sexual harassment. Group norms can discourage deviant behavior because the groups won't accept the behavior. But group membership can also encourage deviant behavior because the individual will feel like they can hide in the group and the chance of being caught is lowered. Okay, next I will talk about a group property 3, status. What is status? Status refers to the position or rank given to groups or their members in a way to differentiate members and basically groups will have higher status and lower status. And status can influence behavior and has been found to be a significant motivator and it's very very important so what determines status based on the status characteristic theory there are three sources first is the power of person wills over others this is relationship about higher status and lower status and second is a person's ability to contribute to the group goals. Mm -hmm. And finally is an individual's personal characteristic. Status can influence on many experts. Example on norms, about a norms definition. My group talked about, talk about it before. So I think that I don't need to explain it to you. So I just talk about the uh, effect of status on norms. Okay, so you know, within the group where high status don't feel the need to conform to the group norms, but they can pressure others to conform. For example, uh, physicians actively resist administrative decisions made by lower-ranking medical insurance company employees. Uh -huh. So, and status can influence on uh, Group interaction, like the member who hold more status, tend to be assertive, and large status differences, like distance between higher status and lower status, can limit diversity of ideas and even creativity. It also impacts equity in a group, which will influence how engaged 
order than the group and in the group process if differences differences in data between high and low status are too large poor individual performance will happen and finally is the effect on stigmatization i will talk a little bit about stigmatization this is the action of describing or regarding someone or something as worthy at disgrace or great disapproval like um with the outbreak of the novel coronavirus of the world we can see some cases about discrimination some countries have racial stigma on asians mm -hmm. some places in france people are kicked off public transport because they are asian it's so unkind right so people who are stigmatized can influence other with their stigma even coincidentally for example men interview for a job were viewed as less qualified when they were sitting next to an obese woman in the wedding room now i will talk about a group property for size and dynamics size is a significant factor in group behavior and the larger group have a trail or more members and the small group have seven or less members like you know the larger group is the harder it is to get contribution by all members and it's also time consuming when uh, making decision and whereas small groups can be restrained the problem solving ability and the knowledge can be could be limited so sai cause some problem so so fluffing is an example where there is a tendency for individual not to work as hard in the groups as they good on the individual basic in a group some people with the so so fluffing problem think that they they work effectively if they do it alone because they think that if in the group they will have many 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 members and they don't need to take responsibility much so the reason of this problem a fair share issue and diffusion of responsibility about fair share issue like uh, one member is lazy the other will reduce their effort why because they don't feel fair if they do more than the others and second reason is diffusion of responsibility like uh, people don't think thing that equitable or they let other take the responsibility because they know they don't have to um, for the outcome to occur this is often referred to as free rider like a uh, failing to contribute may not enough for someone for example teacher give uh, like a uh, student give student group project as midterm result and you are in a group you will be free rider if you don't contribute anything to your group but still receive high score from your teacher because the performance of uh, the other members in group are very very good it's very unfair right okay another example about social fluffing is like uh, in restaurant if there are a small number of customers uh, then some of the servers um, feel like don't need to work because even they are on duty and when working with group managers one must be sure to build uh, individual accountability and social fluffing can be prevented by uh, setting a goals encourage intergroup competition using the evaluation as part of the feedback process and linking group rewards to individual behavior the final property of groups is group cohesiveness this is decree to which group members want to stay together and are motivated to work together as a group and this is the relationship between uh, group cohesiveness performance norms and productivity you can see on this table okay so if 
high cohesiveness and high performance norms, there will be high productivity. But if high cohesiveness but low performance norms, there will be uh, low productivity. When low both and low cohesiveness but high performance norms, there will be moderate. Moderate like just normal or enough. Manager can do a lot to encourage group uh, cohesiveness and something they can do to foster cohesiveness is to keep group small. Like the smaller group is the last problem half, right? And they can also encourage all members to understand of the group goals. They have to understand it clearly and then they go straight to the target in the same role, in the same inspiration, something like that. And moreover, they can also increase the time the group spend together. If you spend time more with other, you will be understand them and the cooperation will be better. And they can hate, hate their perceived status, like push them doing more to improve their skill. In addition, like by Stimulate, stimulating competition with uh, other groups, members will find ways to work together. And manager can also reward a group as a whole, not just an individual uh, within a group. And finally, they can physically isolate the group by sending them retreats or giving them their own workspace. Mm -hmm. So the action can significantly influence group cohesiveness. We will move to the decision-making part. The final property of group is group cohesiveness, or the degree to group uh, members want to stay together and are motivated to work together as a group. Relationship between group cohesiveness, performance norm, and productivity. Both lead to high uh, productivity, high uh, cohesiveness with the low performance lead to the low productivity, low both or low cohesiveness with the high performance lead to the moderate. Why we feel like speaking of in a meeting or classroom or informal group but this isn't against it. Why? A common problem is group think. This occur when the group is seeking conformity and prevent the group from critical and praising unusual minority or unpopular views. We will find it more reason to be in treatment, regardless of its effectiveness or not that commodify their true opinions. We can decrease this problem. Monitor group side encourage group uh, leader to play an impartial role. Oppose one group member to lay role of devils, uh, advocate, stimulate active decision. Uh, another phenomenon in group decision making um, process is group ship where once a solution is selected, group member tend to it substrate in initial uh, uh, season that they hope this can cause to shift to a more complicity or risky decision. For example, that the decision uh, create between close friends as they become more comfortable with each other. They also be more born, confident, and daring. Um, interacting group are traditional group which members discuss pay to pay directly this group often centers them to reserve conformity. This technique can reduce this problem. Brainstorming. This is a process that is aimed at generating, at generating ideas where all ideas are welcome and the group trying to create an environment that overcome reserve for conformity. Nominal group technique is a process that it aims at generating ideas where all ideas are welcome and group try to create an environment that overcome reserve for conformity. Thanks for listening.
Um, I'm Khan and I will present about the evaluating group effectiveness. Um, an interacting group is good for achieving commitment to a solution. Brainstorming develop group enhances and denominal group technique is an inoffensive means for gen generating a large number of ideas. The group members do not meet face to face. Replies of all members to the questionnaires are summarized and fed that to them are sent for review. They are asked to make the decision again in a view of the additional information. This process is repeated until a, set, a satisfactory decision is made. This technique is mostly used for decisions relating to demand forecast. Projecting, project market trend, identify future problem, and predict the future state of finance, production, and attractive. Brainstorming technique is very effective when the problem is comparatively specific and can be simply defined. A complex problem can be broken up into parts, and each part can be taken sparingly at a time generating as many ideas as possible, be, gener uh, be creative, free willing and imaginative, build up and then pick it back and attain or combine earlier ideas and withhold criticism of others' ideas. The subject of the technique depends upon the member's ability to listen to others. Um, Use this interaction as a stimulus to spark new ideas and free and feel free to express them. Further, even idiotic and impressive cable ideas should also be encouraged. More number of ideas should be encouraged so that eventually a higher quality idea would be generated. The nominal curve technique combines quantity and quality data collection in a group setting and avoid problem of group uh, dynamic associated with other group methods such as brainstorming, focus group, ID generation, and problem solving and combined in a structured group process, which encourage and enhance the participation of group members. Nominal curve technique is similar to brainstorming, except that the approach is more structured. Uh, number for number form of curve in name only and operate independently, generating ideas for solving the problem on their own in silence and in writing. Uh, member do not interact with each other so that strong personality domination is avoided. It encourages individual creativity. In conclusion, a generating group is good for achieving commitment to a solution. Brainstorming develops group cohesion, and the nominal group technique is an inexperienced means for generating a large number of ideas. Now we come to the summary. Any characteristic can impact a group, whether it is good or bad. Personality can affect a group, especially teamwork. Any expert is a part of a group. Therefore, individuals should respect each other to achieve effectiveness. Maintaining positive group norms obtain positive outcomes. The primary function of root norms on the individual level is to serve as a reference point. Thanks to the norm, the individual knows how to interpret and construct reality. This function fits perfectly in certain social constructivist paradigm. These paradigm Propose we construct reality through a culture of society and culture. Groups in their norms are the active agents of this process. The norms help 
these interactions and activities happen in the orderly way. They have avoided chaos and conflict. Consequently, groups avoid destruction or decline. Status inequity can lead to resentment among those at the lower end of the status continuum. It is important for group members to believe the status hierarchy is inevitable. The size of a team is a trade-off or balance between variety and individual input. Being a part of a group or a team is not that easy as it seems. Some groups and teams maintain a certain types of group rules for their troop, and those round rules can be measured in terms of the common interests of all the group members. If anyone wants to join such a team considering their common, common interests, then they should follow all the round rules given by the team leader. Therefore, it is necessary to understand that all the group of the team maintain the same level of interest in their team formation. Members of strongly cohesive groups are more inclined to participate readily and to stay with the group. Members tend to like each other and perceive themselves as similar. These characteristics lead members to be relatively dependent on the roof for satisfaction, and thus they are susceptible to being influenced. For example, if any member is getting a vote in organizational politics for enhancing his personal goals, the group might put social pressure on him and make him comply with the group force. Cohesiveness and success are mutually dependent upon each other. Cohesiveness makes the goal achievement easier and the goal achievement adds to success. The reason for this relationship is that Higher degree of cohesiveness leads to high degree of communication, participant, and conformity to the group's norms. Such coordinated efforts result in the agreement about the goals to be achieved, the methods of achieving them, and finally achieving the final goals. Diversity appears to have a mixed impact on group performance. It turns out that different types of diversity generate various sources of conflict, which affect how a team performs. The kind of group conflict that exists and how the team handles the conflict will determine whether this diversity is effective in increasing or reducing performance. Informational diversity stir constructive conflict or debate around the task at hand. That is, people deliberate about the best of course of action. Now, coming to the implication for managers. A business, a business is only good as is people. Every manager must possess the knowledge of group behavior along with individual behavior. He must understand group psychology. He should understand individual behavior in the context of group behavior. Individual behavior is influenced by the group behavior. Truly understand employees is also critical when organizational shifts occur as it provides manager with the foresight to know whether changes are likely to cause their employees to struggle or thrive. Doing these things require managers to understand employee at a deeper level beyond their name, job title, or goal plan. Achieving this level of understanding comes through meaningful conversation 
with and about employees and their talents or interest. This starts with having effective ongoing conversations with the employee themselves. But equally important are in-depth discussion and with people across the organization who have diverse perspectives on employees and their work. To harvest all the advantages of working with different personalities, managers must first accept that no one is hardwired to communicate with others in their personality type. And this is the root cause of all professional and personal conflicts. Once they comprehend this simple concept, they will become more tolerant of all those people's behavior and try to reach out to them in their way. Not them. When establishing new groups or teams, smart managers strive for diversity by balance the individuals they select based upon different internal factors such as age, race, and gender and in external factors including differing backgrounds, educational experience, and political ideologies. Additionally, when working with diverse groups and teams, smart managers seek open discussion, encourage feedback among group and team members, actively listen and practice flexible decision making. After all, having diverse groups and teams in the workplace provide little value if there are new ways of thinking or ignore. Increase employees' satisfaction by making them perceive their job roles accurately. Employees usually underestimate their job because they always look up to their co-workers who are better than themselves. They just want to finish the job, they do not put any efforts in it. As a good manager, he or she should encourage employee to understand their roles and stress the duty in order to get the best result. Individuals who have the opportunity to shape their own roles and work according to their strengths, also demonstrate greater job satisfaction. Regular jobs reveals that allow the opportunity for employee feedback and encourage a proactive approach to role development across this need. However, manager will need to exercise judgment in aligning an individual's wishes with the greater needs of the business. And that is the end of our group presentation. What do you think? If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you.